Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. Today we're dividing polynomials by monomials, as you see in the two examples that are on the slide right now. When we're asked to divide, this is an example of dividing a binomial by a monomial. So in other words, two terms divided by one term. The way that I like to do it is to put it into a fraction. Some people prefer to leave it kind of linear. I like to write it as a fraction. I think it works a little bit better. Because as a fraction, I know when I have an addition question over a denominator of 3x, I can write it out as two separate fractions. 27x squared divided by 3x and 9x divided by 3x. This helps me because I can simplify each term separately. And I'll show you how I do that. In this example, I'm actually going to expand it out and show all of the work. In the other ones, I'm going to kind of presume that you have a little bit of background knowledge on dividing monomials. And if you're struggling with dividing monomials and you feel like you need to see all the steps of that, you can pause the recording or you can go and check out the recording that I have on dividing monomials because I'm going to assume that that's a prerequisite that you have. But for this example, I'll go ahead and show you 27x squared. 27 is 3 times 3 times 3 x squared is x squared. 3 times x would be 3 times 3x. 9x is 3 times 3 times x. And what I'm going to do is cancel out everything that's exactly the same in the numerator and the denominator. I'm going to work each fraction one at a time. So first I work this fraction, 3 and 3, x and x. I've canceled out one of these x's, so that leaves me with 1. And now I'm going to move on to the second fraction where I have 3 on the top and bottom and x on the top and bottom, both the numerator and denominator. Now I'll rewrite this given that everything's canceled out in the denominators, meaning it's a denominator of 1. So because it's a denominator of 1, I can just write out 3 times 3 is 9, x, and I have 3 left over there. I could have written this out as 9x over 1, 9x divided by 1 is simply 9x. So I didn't write these as fractions. I just simplified in one step. Here is our next example. Again, in each following example, I'm not going to show all of the steps for factoring the, the fractions or simplifying the fractions. I'm just going to show, well, I'll show you what I'm going to show. First, I convert it from being a division by 4x squared y into being a fraction. Then I'm going to divide each term. Notice that when I have a negative, it does not change the process that I'm going through. Minus 16x squared y squared does not matter. I just have a negative sign in there instead of a positive sign. It's not going to change anything at all. In fact, the end answer is just going to have a negative instead of a positive, which is fine. I'll divide each monomial by monomial which would give me 100 divided by 4 is 25. x cubed, y cubed divided by x squared, y gives me x, y squared. 16 divided by 4 is 4. x squared, y squared divided by x squared, y will leave me with one y here. And then 12 x squared, y divided by 4. x squared, y just leaves me with 3. 12 divided by 4 is 3. And then the variable is exactly the same, so they cancel out. And that's how I would end up with my final answer, final simplified answer here. With this one, I'm going to have another situation that's interesting. I'm trying to throw at you as many different examples that will show you the different types of answers that you might have. Again, in the previous one, I had a negative number. This one here will have another different type of answer. You'll see when we get to the answer. But I'm taking the entire trinomial here, three terms divided by 5ab. I'm going to rewrite it as a fraction and then write it as three separate fractions. Those same exact steps we're going to follow every time. Now I'm going to simplify. 50ab squared will give me 10 divided by 5ab, leaves me with 10b. 25ab divided by 5ab leaves me with 5. Variables are exactly the same. 25 divided by 5 is 5. This one here is the unique situation because I don't have any a variable in the numerator. I have 10b squared 
divided by 5AB. 10 divided by 5 is 2. B squared divided by B will leave me with B. But I still have an A in the denominator. So you just leave it there. Your final answer can have a fraction. So in the previous question, we had a negative in the final answer. In this one, we have a fraction in the final answer, and that's fine. You can leave it in this form, and it is perfectly OK. Our trinomial now has a fraction in it, which is fine. For this question, and I believe this is the last question, there's going to be another interesting part to this answer, and we'll show you when we get there. I take the division question and rewrite it as a fraction. Then I'm going to divide my fraction into being three separate fractions. 4p squared q over 2p, 6p q divided by 2p, and then 2p divided by 2p. And in each case, I'm going to simplify. 4p squared q divided by 2p. That will leave me with 2 and a pq in the numerator. Everything in the denominator is canceled, so I no longer have a fraction. 6pq divided by 2p. Again, the 6 divided by 2 is 3. p divided by p is 1, and q. So because that 1 is multiplied or divided, it doesn't really have any impact. And our final answer here, this is to emphasize the importance of not just canceling stuff out. 2p divided by 2p. We would, if we were writing in those lines to cancel out, we would cancel everything out. But that does not mean we have nothing left. It means we have one left. 2p divided by 2p, anything divided by itself leaves us with one. So again, when we're canceling things out, they're not just disappearing, they're becoming one. In this case, if you cancel out everything in the denominator, whatever's left is divided by one which means it stays the same. But in this case, everything is canceled out, so I have 1 divided by 1, which will leave me with my final answer of 1. Another interesting twist that you can have in here. You might end up with just a variable. You might end up with just a number. You might end up with a negative or a fraction. You can have all sorts of different parts to the answers. But if you follow these same steps that are shown in this video, you should be able to solve any polynomial divided by a monomial. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful for you. Be sure to subscribe for more math lessons. You can check out the playlists for more Algebra 1 lessons. And there are also playlists. I've put together a couple of random, silly how-to videos that you can check out and hope that you enjoy them. Have a wonderful day.